Today, I'm giving you some tips for faster editing. Hi, I'm Gary Chaffo, and welcome back to the Computer Byte. Our top story today, IBM announced today that their brand new computer will come shipped with 640 kilobytes of RAM. The company states, no one will ever need more RAM than this, ever. But first, Manu Smith, our software correspondent, is going to give us a little bit of help with Premiere Pro CC. Now there are a lot of videos on how to create faster edits in Premiere. Top 10 shortcuts, top 50 shortcuts. But what I wanna do is I wanna show you more than just shortcuts. I wanna show you some shortcuts that I use all the time. And in addition, some concepts and techniques that I use for faster editing. So let's get started. Let's not waste any time. First of all, I'm using a Macintosh computer. So my key commands are generally gonna be the same as the PC commands, except my modifier keys are gonna be different. So when I say command, Windows will probably be using control and stuff like that. So just note that I'm using a Macintosh. Second, I want you to know what your keyboard shortcuts are. So we're using Adobe Premiere Pro CC 2018. The first thing I do is, when I used to be a programmer, I would use my IDE, which is an integrated development environment, which is, you can almost call this an IDE for editing and I would find out, well, where are the shortcuts? Where's the list of keyboard shortcuts? And that's the first thing I would learn. So that's your first tip. Find the keyboard shortcuts and learn them. How do you do that? Well, let's take a look. You go up to your Premiere Pro menu and you choose keyboard shortcuts. That brings up this window. If this is the first time you've ever seen this window, shame on you. Learn this. Look at this guy. <laughs> it lists all the shortcut commands that are already defined and tons of them that aren't defined. Okay, and if you want, you can search. So if I come up here and I go ripple, I can find out what ripple commands are already preset for me and what ripple commands can I preset to something new. And there is a shortcut for the keyboard shortcuts. That's Alt Command K. Boom, that pops me into this window. Trust me, learn this window, play around with this stuff. It'll make you faster. Now, the other thing I'm gonna tell you is create a template project. I preach this in almost every Premiere editing uh, tutorial that I do. The reason is, if you're a vlogger and you're doing a daily vlog or if you're doing a series like we do in Pull My Focus, I have a separate template folder for Pull My Focus. I have another template for, say, some client work or if I'm doing documentaries or something like that. So open a new project. Go up to File, New, Project, and then define a new project and name it Template, right? So I'm gonna name it template and I'm gonna save it. And then inside, I'm gonna create, if you notice right here, I have already created the bins I need and the bins that I need are already populated with stuff. All right? AFX for After Effects stuff, audio, I have ambiance, dialogue, music, and sound effects. And inside music, I have another common folder for PMF common fold stuff that we use all the time, like right time, right, right place, right time, which is our title music. Create this template project, not only inside Premiere, but also outside of Premiere. So if I show you my folder structure in Premiere in a Finder, I kind of echo it's almost exactly the same. There'll be some changes between the Premiere project and the actual Finder uh, folder structure, but do this. Zip this up, save it. So every time you create a new project, you just unzip it, rename it, you're ready to go. All right. Now let's move on to some real shortcut commands. The first one you should know is Control S. Yes, I said Control S. I know most people can set an auto uh, an auto save, and in Premiere, if you go to Premiere Preferences Auto Save, you'll see the window for automatically creating saves. I have mine set to seven minutes. I used to have mine set for three minutes, but what tends to happen sometimes is if you're in the middle of an edit, that Auto save will steal focus from whatever you're doing for the moment that it needs to save. So sometimes I'll be in like an opacity mask or some kind of color correction and the Premiere will steal focus from me and then I'll forget what I'm doing and then drift away. Anyway, I make it less aggressive. I said it's about seven minutes with 20 backups that 
incrementally go over time. And I just gotten used to hitting Command S to save. So after I've done a bunch of things, maybe I did a bunch of key, um, maybe I set a, a bunch of keyframes and boy, it would suck to lose those keyframes. Boom, Command S, Control S on the Windows. My S key is almost wiped out. Wow, it's kind of gone. Next up, Command I for import. Now you can import just by going up to your file menu, going to import, and then choosing your file from there, hitting import. But I tend to just use Command I. And what I'll do is I'll go, let's so say I'm bringing in some sound effects. So I'll go to my audio, sound effects, and I'll highlight the folder I want the thing to go into. <laughs> I'll do that first, then hit Command I. Boom, double click camera shutter. Boom, got it, right in there. Also, you know you can drag in things from the finder, but I still find this is the fastest way to do it. It's the fastest way to go, Command I. Note, the more you get away from your mouse, the faster you're gonna be if you can just deal with the keyboard. Anyway, let's talk a little bit more about that. Faster jump cuts. Now, here's a technique, and what I'm gonna walk you through two different methods of doing this that may speed up your workflow for doing vlog style jump cuts, uh, what I like to call Philip DeFranco style cuts, where you're just talking and then you're doing a series in one take, and then later you go back and remove the ums and you remove the mistakes and you jump cut to yourself and it ends up looking something like this, but not exactly, but you guys know what I'm talking about. For this, I'm gonna show you a bunch of key commands and some other neat stuff. All right, let's go into my rushes folder, which is where I keep all my raw from the video, from the camera stuff. Let's go to Ellen, and this is Ellen. She's awesome. She's done some stuff for uh, Pull My Focus as well as our other YouTube channel that we do. We're going to use this. This is the raw stuff. And as you can see, it's green screen because we're gonna composite stuff later. But Here's the first method for jump cutting that you may or may not use. And this one does not use the mouse at all. That's right. I said it does not use the mouse at all. Watch this. First things first is we're gonna make sure we're highlighted in our source panel. One thing you may or may not know is if you hit Control Shift and then use your comma and, comma and period keys, you can toggle which panel is highlighted in Premiere. So I can move the highlight using these modifiers with the period and comma. So I'm gonna make sure the source monitor is selected. Now I'm gonna use my shuttle keys, J, K, L. J, reverse, K, stop, L, forward. And I'm gonna L, forward. And if I L, forward again, it goes twice as fast. And I L, forward again, it goes even three times as fast, or four times as fast. And I can do the same thing with reverse. So I'm coming back. And I'm gonna to go to the top of where I think One. I wanna capture. Let's see, I get out of the way, and I set the teleprompter, and Ellen's ready to talk. Now I'm gonna use the I and the O keys, which you may know, in point, set my in point. Hey, Lindy lovers. And set my out point. And now, here's where the magic starts. Insert, comma, boom. I hit insert and it inserts automatically to the timeline, the audio and the video, where the cursor was. My cursor happened to be at the beginning, so there you go. Continuing. Ellen here. Ellen here, I want that. All right, Nilla. Boom. In point. Ellen here. Pause, out point, comma. Continue. Let's do one more. Welcome to. Welcome. There we go. In point. Welcome to Swing Nation for June 2016. Pause, out point, comma. Hands free off the mouse. And matter of fact, I only use one hand for that whole thing. So I have my other hand free for, oh, stop it. Now let's roll it back. Check it out. Shift control. I can walk through and find my timeline. And now shuttle commands still work in the timeline. They work in the source monitor, they work in the program monitor, they work on the timeline. So I can hit home to go to the start and hit play. Hey Lindy lovers, Ellen here. Welcome to Swing Nation for June 2016. Now, this is gonna be an assembly. I can go back in and alter things a little bit and I'll show you how to do that too. I'm gonna to go back on the mouse though for this. 
let's say I'm done with my assembly. I've got all my ums and all my mistakes cut out and they're all on a timeline the way I just showed you. Now, I'm going to, whenever you hover over one of the in points or out points of a clip, notice how it turns into that little red, you know, arrow indicator saying you're at the end of this, you're at the end of that. Now, if I wanted to bring this clip in a little more, once I let it go, it still has a gap. So I have to go right click, ripple delete. No, 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 no. We're not doing that. I'm going to hit undo. When you hold and hover over, if I hold the command key, and that'll be control on the, on the PC, it turns yellow, which means I'm in ripple mode now. That means when I grab this, and right now it's going to snap to that cursor. I can turn that off. I can turn off snap modes anytime I want. And when I let go, boom. Not only does it do a trim, but it does a ripple. And I can do that everywhere. So whenever I see the red, if I hold down Command, it turns yellow. And that happens on both sides, too. If I want to trim this, yellow, boom. There we go. Play. Alan here. Welcome to Swing Nation for June 2016. Cool, right? Now, the other way of doing it, we're going to use the mouse again, if you're more familiar with the mouse. This is method two of fast jump cut editing. Let's get a fresh window up. And I'm going to clear this in and out marker on this and go back to home. Okay, great. Method two is going to utilize the Q, W, and Command K, which is cut. Q will be ripple edit trim from the beginning. W is ripple edit trim from the end. And Command K is cut right at the cursor. And I'll show you how this works. All right, so let's start. And I'm going to insert, since I didn't select an in and out point, if I just hit the comma right now, the entire file gets dropped onto the uh, timeline. Now let's hit home to get to the start. Now I can shuttle once again. You can see how I can shuttle right here. And what I want to do is I want to get to the start of where she talks. And I can see that clearly on the audio timeline where there's nothing, but then there's talking here. And if you can't see the audio timeline, sometimes it's smashed down like this. It's really small. If you double click in just a dead spot right there, it'll maximize it too, so you can see all the tools available on that one timeline. So let's go to the start and I'm going to hit Command K. That does a cut. And now I'm going to go to the start of the next and hit Command K. That does a cut. Now I can do this continuously. Command K. Command K. Let's do one more. Command K. And now, if I go back, I'm going to use the W key. Now the W key, one like I said, trims from the end of the of the selected clip to the cursor. So if I hit W right now, watch what happens to this clip. It trimmed it and ripple trimmed it to the end of that. I can do it again. Right here. W. And right here. W. And right here. W. This is a more visual way of editing, but this could get you 90% of the way there. You may still have ums and you may still have, you know, uh, moments where you want to edit, but at least this gets you a nice assembly really fast. I'll show you the Q key. The Q key does the opposite. So let's say I, cut, I wanted to cut me walking into the frame and just get here. If I hit Q, it's going to trim from the beginning to the cursor and it do a ripple. Boom. One key. We're done. And we're ready to go. Hey, Lindy lovers. Ellen here. Welcome to Swing Nation for June 2016. How's that for fast? So those are your two methods for doing faster jump cuts. Hopefully that speeds you up a little bit. Moving a little further with the shuttle commands, JKL, you notice that when I hit L a couple of times, it goes faster and faster. Same thing for rewind. But you can also slow-mo. And if you want to slow-mo, you hit shift L for forward. <laughs> and she sounds like she's had a little too much to drink. And it works the same way backwards, shift reverse. And the, the more I click it, the faster slow motion it gets. It never gets back to full speed, but that's how you do slow motion. Notice that the pitch wasn't changed. If you want to change, if you want the pitch change during a slow motion, then go to Premiere's Preferences and Audio, and then turn off 
maintain pitch while shuttling. And that'll make it go instead of keeping the pitch. Finally, let's talk about timeline presets. Now, like I said before, usually what you'll see is your, ti your timeline will be scrunched down and all your, all your audio tracks will maybe not be visible too well and your video tracks might not be visible too well. Well, I made a couple of presets. My F9 key makes, maximizes my video line. It maximizes, kind of, let's see, the first, the first six. The first six video lines, they get big. The F10 key for me shrinks down the video line and maximizes the first six audio. Okay? I'll show you how to make these presets because they're really neat. So I can flip back and forth. Because you usually find yourself with, you know, trying to figure out where your audio and video is on the timeline. If you go to the wrench tool, you'll see save preset right there. Now, let's say I created a new one. So I'm going to go into this here right here is computer byte. And I'm going to, let's say I add a couple of more audio. So let's add a track. There's four, I'm gonna double click so it's big. I'm just gonna do a single add, boom. And there's five, I double click. Let's make this bigger. I can make this whole window bigger by hitting the tilde. Notice we have five of those. And let's just make the first video track bigger. So if I double click, that makes the first video track bigger. All right. And actually, let's grab something and put put them on there so you can see it better. All right. So this is this is my this is what I want my preset to be. All right. I'm going to go to the wrench tool and go to save preset. And it names it untitled track height preset. Let's name it huge audio and select a shortcut, it's preset to none. I'm gonna set it to nine, because you get up to nine, you get 10 presets, and hit okay. Great, it's saved, but how do I bind it to a shortcut key? Well, back to the keyboard shortcuts. Option, Command, K, brings that up. Now, I wanna look for a command, a keyboard command that hasn't been used, I don't wanna overwrite anything. So I'm gonna type F13 to see if my F13 was used, nope. My F13 key is free and clear. And now I'm gonna search for height. And here's height preset number nine. Press the key that I want the shortcut to be binded to, F13. So now, hit okay. Now whenever I hit F13, let's say this, these were scrunched down. I'm gonna scrunch them down again and let's scrunch this down all the way. <laughs> Whenever I hit F13, boom, they've been expanded. So those track presets, Adobe does not predefine those for you. You have to set those yourselves. But as you can see, they come in handy for creating different kind of configurations of your timeline. So that's it for now. Uh, let us know in the comments below if any of these helped or if what are your favorite shortcuts that I missed. And also let us know if you wanna see more, I can do some more command shortcuts because this barely scratches the surface. Uh, I use a lot of different shortcut keys to make my editing go a lot faster. So let us know in the comments below, what do you wanna see? Anyway, thanks for watching. Check out pullmyfocus.tv for all our articles and all our videos and get to it you guys. Go out there, make stuff, be quick, be good, be amazing. I'm going to go back to making Ellen sound drunk. Slow motion.